Okay, we're here with Elizabeth O'Connor, Republican candidate for St. Mary's County Commissioner in the north end of St. Mary's County. What district is that, District Elizabeth? 3. District 3. That's a, a Mechanics Hill Golden Beach over to Chaptico, the 4th District, and the 7th District. Correct. Okay, Elizabeth, you, you retired as a St. Mary's County Deputy Sheriff, and now you're running for the seat currently occupied by your husband, John, who has been elected twice as county commissioner, yes, with good margins both times. Yes, uh, have you been paying attention his campaign and his ability to to uh, win an election in hopes that you might be winning too? <laughs> um, I mean, I listen to what he what he what he has to tell me. I mean, I, I've been helpful and helping in both of his campaigns. So. Do, you know, do you know a lot of the people who voted for him? Um, I know a fair amount of people. I know a fair amount of people just from working in the county for almost 22 years. Right. Um, and I ride horses, so there's a lot of horses and agricultural in the county that know me. Are you going to ride a horse in a parade for this uh, election? No, I have a young horse and he's he's not trustworthy. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's kind of like the politicians are hanging around. <laughs> well, yeah, I can't okay. argue on that. All right. What kind of, you're filed in a Republican primary. Yes. What kind of Republican are you? Are you a rhino Republican? No. Are you conservative Republican? I, I would Define consider, yourself. So I would consider myself a conservative Republican. However, um, I am not opposed to voting for the best candidate, you know, in, in a, not a primary, obviously, but in a regular election. But um, I've always voted conservatively. Well, well, fat chances on getting a better candidate in the Democratic Party in this county. <laughs> they can't even fill out a ticket. Oh, uh, wow. Well. But okay. no, historically, I vote conservative, um, and I have conservative um, viewpoints on you, fiscally. How do you define that? Do you define that when it comes to a budget? Yes. Yes. I'm conservative when it comes to a budget. I feel that... Um, well, the current commissioners have proposed a capital budget that includes a $26 million sheriff's palace, which this guy, Steve Hall, said last night at the candidate forum he fully supports. Your husband has said he does not support it and wants to move the patrol headquarters to the new $6 million deputies restroom facility on Great Mills Road. What will you do as a commissioner? Will you move ahead with that sheriff's palace or would you deep six it? Um, I'm not familiar with all of their demands in the budget, um, but do I feel that the district station on Great Mills Road is not is being underutilized? Absolutely. Um, do I feel that the Northern District Station is being underutilized? Absolutely. Do I feel like the Sheriff's Office often asks for frivolous things instead of things such as manpower and um, be more concerned about retaining their employees? Absolutely. Um, I'm probably going to um, ruffle some feathers here, but I feel that um, from my experience at the Sheriff's Office as a deputy, the command staff as a whole is less concerned about their people as they are their image. Well, the point of the Sheriff's Palace proposal is that they formulated this plan without ever talking to the public. They didn't have a space needs study. They didn't have any citizens on a commission. That sounds familiar. Yes. They did the same thing in the 90s with the uh, proposed Judicial Palace. They, um, they did have, but they had a citizens committee at that time. Right. But then it was overruled by the new commissioners who were elected in 94. So. And, taxpayer and it, dollars. And it's also f sounds familiar because of the pot factory in Abel. That's the more uh, contemporaneous that I was getting. No at. public hearings. Exactly. Tax dollars <clears throat> are hard earned money of the citizens, and the citizens should have a say in how those tax dollars are spent. And the citizens should have a say in things, large ticket items, such as a new sheriff's office headquarters. And I absolutely believe that the marijuana farm in the 7th District should have had a public hearing. Absolutely. 
um, as far as the sheriff's office palace, um, I think that there are other ways around it and better ways to spend the taxpayer dollars. Well, how do you fight crime by having a bigger building with more people stuck inside? You don't. But how do you fight crime when you can't keep your employees at your agency because of how you treat them? Well, is that why there's a field full of police cars sitting out there? Um, I'm not sure what's going on with those police cars. I don't know what their mileage is. Um, I do know that I field trained numerous officers, and of those officers, um, one, two, Four that I can think of either are no longer law enforcement officers by, by choice or they um, one's up at Prince George's County and um, so many have left to go to other agencies um, so in my opinion their priority should be having sufficient manpower to handle the calls for service um, versus worrying about a building so um, like I said I'm probably gonna ruffle some feathers by saying that but um, a building is not nearly as important as having somebody that can adequately provide services to the citizens of the county while having adequate backup. You know, it's not a good feeling to be going to a call by yourself, and that happens all the time. It's not a good time to. It's not a good feeling to be on a traffic stop by yourself, and that knowing that no backup is coming because it's not available, and their families don't feel safe about that. So if you can go to another agency where you're going to be treated better and they're going to have adequate manpower to be able to serve the citizens in a safer manner, I don't blame them for leaving. And I think that the Sheriff's Office, they have bigger concerns than building uh, a headquarters. What, what experience do you have in terms of getting around the county, running calls, meeting people, investigating incidents and so forth. How does that help you now as a commissioner in understanding the different areas of the county? You're elected countywide. Sure. So how does it help you understand the people and problems in more remote areas of the county as well as Lexington Park? Absolutely. The North End, um, <laughs> there is way less officers up here, but when the, when the North End loses it, it goes bad. It goes sideways quick, and there's not as many officers up here. Um, it's not uncommon for somebody to wait 15 minutes for an emergency call because you might have two officers in the north end, one at the jail, and the call is down in uh, Colton's Point. The same thing for Ridge. I can tell you when I was a deputy, I fought with a guy on the side of the road who was a DWI for 15 minutes and a citizen stopped him. So manpower has been an issue a very long time at this agency. As far as the citizens, I know the county, uh, like the back of my hand, um, and there are, are a lot of different demographics. There are a lot of different um, backgrounds um, from the Mennonite to the Amish to, you know, Texan River Naval Air Station military to lawyers and doctors, and I've dealt with all of those backgrounds. How about in the schools? Do you feel the need now for the county to go ahead and harden the entrances to every school, elementary school, everything, and install the metal detectors, especially in the high schools? Charles County, they pick up a knife, a gun, or a box cutter, or uh, fake guns every day of the week in their schools. I absolutely believe that money would be well spent on making our schools less of a soft target. If you historically look at the school shootings that have occurred, a lot of them have been in small jurisdictions. It'll never happen here. We already had one. It's not, it wasn't necessarily considered an active shooter, but we already had an incident. Well, the reaction to the murder of the girl in Great Mills High School was not to put in metal detectors at the school, but to put in the artificial turf for a football field. I mean, and that is this Board of County Commissioners. As a parent, I feel that you should not worry about your kid when they go to school. Is every parent going to worry about their kid? Yes. But if there are things that we can do to make the schools less of a soft target, there should be an officer at every school, and that officer should be at that school. 
Okay, we were talking about education and safety. Yes. Yeah. Um, I absolutely believe that a parent shouldn't be concerned about sending their child off to school. Is every parent going to worry about their child? Yes. Do school resource officers need to be in every school? Yes. Do I believe that um, metal detectors are a deterrent and are a good idea? Yes. Um, do I think that they will stop everything? No. But they're a deterrent. And I think that some people have a problem with it because of the image it portray portrays, but I really don't care what kind of image it portrays besides the fact that we're making an attempt to keep our children safe at school. It's a better image than a gurney coming out of the Absolutely. building with a body on it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. All right. <clears throat> the, uh, the road problem in the county, the bridge, the Democrats have been ignoring it for years and yes. posing for pictures and everything yes. and doing nothing. And it doesn't really matter who's been governor. It hasn't been prioritized. It doesn't matter who's been the state senator. Uh, Dyson used to holler for it, never got anywhere. Uh, Bailey seems to ignore it until it's time for a photo. So what will you do to try to tell the state that this is a priority, taking care of the gridlock at Great Mills, the traffic on Route 235, a, <clears throat> a bridge with two lanes, you know, with four lanes coming to it from Calvert and two lanes going to it from St. Mary's. I mean, it just makes no sense. It looks like it was designed by a committee. So, um, you know, unfortunately, it doesn't seem like bridges get attention until it's, um, uh-oh, it's getting ready to fall down. You know, look at the nice bridge. Look at the Woodrow Wilson Bridge. Um, look at the Chesapeake Bay Bridge. Um, squeaky, gil squeaky wheel gets the grease. Um, I don't know that I would be any more um, convincing, um, but it's obviously an issue. It's an issue not just because of gridlock. It's an issue not because just because it's falling apart. It's an issue not just because of public safety. Um, you know, completely off topic. There's been numerous people who have committed suicide off of the bridge. And I've gotten into an argument with people because, you know, they discussed putting the safety net up and people are like, why are you going to put that up when the bridge is just going to be rebuilt and it's a waste of money? It's not a waste of money if it's your relative. And how can you put a value on one life? Um, so, I mean, obviously I would be, I would advocate for uh, getting the bridge repaired because it's beyond they're patching it. It, it. I'm a. I don't like driving across it. I don't like going on a boat underneath of it. Well, it has steel bands holding up right, pilings band together. Steel band aids. <laughs> um, so obviously, it's something that needs to be addressed. The gridlock and and for base traffic needs to be addressed. I know that they've done traffic studies in the past, and tried to. Um, you know, line the lights up to alleviate some of the traffic, but it seems like the lights must get off kilter. Putting the um, that lane at Route 5 and Great Mills in has alleviated some of that, but all it takes is one accident, and then you're sitting in traffic for an extended period of time. So traffic studies need to be done. They need to be contemporaneous and um, ever-evolving. Um, Patuxent River Naval Air Station, you know, when they have higher security checks, that creates more of a gridlock. Um, and let's be real, 2.35 in the morning, if you are not doing 65, 70 miles an hour, people try to run you off the road. And there's not sufficient traffic enforcement, but that goes back to not having sufficient law enforcement. Well, the traffic enforcement from the Sheriff's Department, they have motorcycles they only use for parades and funerals. They're not working traffic. No, because they don't, those people are overburdened and they have other assignments that they have to fulfill and they don't have the time to devote to using the motor units to enforce traffic. So they're kind of like show toys. Well, I mean, that's kind of what they are, you know. They're okay. only brought out for parades and funerals. Okay. All right. The, uh, the last question would be, what do you think of the ability of the county to meet the needs of the Navy, to keep them happy, and and to work with them to address problems that they think are important. You think the county's been doing a good job over the years? Could they do better? What would you do? I think that a lot of people are scared to lose the, the Naval Air Station, rightly so. 
It brings a lot of um, citizens, employees, income, taxes to the county. Um, I think there needs to be an open line of communication between base command staff and the county commissioners, not just, you know, to include the county politicians, not just the state and federal levels, such as Steny Hoyer and um, Jack Bailey and, and those higher ups. Um, as far as doing a good job, um, sorry, my alarm's going off. Um, as far as doing a good job with communication, um, I think some politicians have done better. Well, all right, what would you do to enhance the cooperation with the Navy? I mean, I think that communication is the key. Communication is the key to everything. So open doors of communication, you know, does it need to be one more meeting that people have to attend? Maybe not. But okay. Could it be an email? Could it be um, just people touching base on a regular basis, making sure that everything's okay, seeing if there's anything more that could be done or to lessen burdens of traffic and stuff like that um, and see if they do have any concerns. Okay, you're running for commissioner, your, your husband's running for sheriff. Mm -hmm. Do you think there's any kind of ethical conflict there? Have you sought any advice? So previously we have sought out um, the local board of ethics and they found that there wasn't a conflict. Um, in the event that we were both elected, we would seek out an official opinion from the Maryland um, Board of Ethics. But as far as the people that we've approached it and spoken to about it and had it vetted, they, they said it hasn't been a conflict. Obviously, I would recuse myself in any situation that would involve his salary directly. Um, but otherwise, it's not going to affect him personally, then there's no conflict. Okay. How do you how do you feel about the Board of Commissioners being an all-male board right now? And it's been a few years since we've had a woman in there trying to tell these guys what to do. Do you enjoy the prospect of being one woman at, and four guys? Will it make a difference? Um, so when I was hired at the Sheriff's Office, um, I was the first female dive team member. I was the first female canine handler. Um, I worked with all, mostly men. And I have no problem working with men, and I have no problem standing up to men. Uh, I'm very strong-willed, you can ask my husband. Um, and uh, I'm always up for a challenge. Okay. And I think that having a female's viewpoint on things uh, can always add something to the mix. Couldn't do any worse than the people that allowed the pot factory at Abel, Maryland. Well. I, that, I had nothing to do with that, but, you know, like I already said, I think that that should have been a public hearing, you know, to allow the citizens to address their concerns. Okay. All right. Elizabeth O'Connor, she's running in the July 19th Republican primary for county commissioner. Thank you for your time. Thank